Welcome to Balance in the Ledger, where tech and finance intersect. I'm Robert Hackett. And I'm Jen Vietchner. And today we're here with Catherine Coley, the CEO of Binance US. Thanks for being here, Catherine. Thank you, guys. Real pleasure. So blockchain is a technology that knows no borders. And Binance, uh, the company from which you take your name, has also been a company that, for much of its history, has also known no borders. Why does there need to be a US entity version of Binance? That's a great question. Certainly, Binance has been servicing most of the globe right now. But in the US, due to the regulations that are at hand, we're seeing a new need for a specific type of exchange to be offered. So we bring a marketplace that's suited for our American users with the same technology that they can experience on Binance, but with the comfort that it's within regulation in the US. But there was already Binance operating in the U.S., and that recently withdrew from the country to be replaced with Binance U.S. Um, as of the late, late September. What's different about Binance U.S. Uh, versus its predecessor, Binance? So the main difference between Binance U.S. and Binance.com is a couple of things. One being we are offering a selected amount of tokens rolling out in a sequence so that we can get adequate liquidity on there and available for a wide variety for the American users. With that, we want to be applying products new to the market and in a cadence that will work with the regulation in the U.S. So although Binance.com has rolled out several new features, we will be going at a, at a different cadence and speed, but one that will be in line with the American regulation. Even within U.S., there are a whole bunch of laws that differ between various states. Uh, so what is your status right now? Where are you operational? Where do you expect to be operational next where you aren't? Right. We are operational right now in 37 states in the U.S. and Puerto Rico. We have to go through a series of process in order to apply for state-by-state -state licenses, and that's why you'll see some of the states left out with a somewhat unknown time frame for when they'll actually be able to have access Binance.us. Um, in this, we see it as a, a progress to roll out our services across America, um, but we ask for your patience, and we are working on it. The technology that powers Binance US, is it similar to the technology that powers Binance? Yes, you'll see a lot of the similar features in the aspect that Binance US can actually license the technology built for Binance.com. We're able to borrow the matching engine as well as some of the wallet technology that has been superior in leading Binance.com into be a global uh, cryptocurrency exchange worldwide. What's different about Binance US? I mean, will it feel different to users or will the experience be different? Yeah, there's some nuances between markets when you go live in them. So um, the aspects around what, what attracts an American user and what's that uh, necessity that they have in terms of understanding the trust where they're trading, uh, the functionality of the uh, process, the platform itself. A couple of those things will be subtly changed, but the uh, strong technology behind the matching engine, the speed, the simplicity, and um, the security element will all still be um, that high caliber that you experience at Binance.com. On the debut day, there were some reports of bugs, uh, some withdrawal issues that happened with customers. Uh, how are you addressing some of those uh you know, complaints and various gripes from the community? Yes, maybe unlike a, a couple other our US peers, I've actually been manning the uh, customer support. So it's been a pure experience for me to hear firsthand what's causing problems and then being able to fix them in real time for our users so we can really get close to a pure product that's going to be making sense for our users. Uh, so some of the small bugs would make sense, walking them through, hand-holding through the onboarding experience. It's tough. It's not a, it's not a simple and fun process, but it's been a priority of mine to make sure that onboarding, because we are requiring KYC at all the stages to verify your account, are easy and quickly to be done. A coalition of cryptocurrency exchanges recently came together, uh, Coinbase, Circle, Kraken, and a bunch of others, and they're basically trying to do some sort of self-regulation, uh, rating digital assets and determining what might qualify as a security and what wouldn't qualify as a security, um, sort of in the absence of uh, clarity from SEC regulators. Uh, is that an initiative that you think is good, that you agree with? Is Binance US going to join that at some point in time? We agree with it in, in the sense that we also self-regulate. So we have a digital asset risk assessment framework to which we vet all of our offerings through before they become listed. Um, it works through a, a measure of process that we can then show and clarify why we've chosen certain tokens and coins to be available on Binance US. So I think in, in terms of timing, we were probably a little late to the game to get invited to uh, that, but certainly knocking on their door to see if there's an extra seat for us. 
And can you talk a little bit about why you've chosen to launch with the cryptocurrencies that do you have? Yes, yeah, so liquidity is a big aspect of the American market. We want to make sure that you have healthy markets when you're launching and going live. Having a, a variety without much activity on it would maybe dissuade some people from trading on it. So we launched with seven coins against US dollars and USDT. And then the following day, we launched five more coins that made it through our digital asset risk assessment framework. And given our ear to the people, they said we needed more Bitcoin pairs. So we launched five more Bitcoin pairs as well with that. Um, we'll continue to kind of go through that process of vetting and listing and announce that uh, clearly to the market to communicate with them. Your background is actually, you were working at Ripple prior to this, uh, and you had a hand in some of their XRP relationships with institutions. Uh, tell us what you were doing there and why you made the jump over to Binance US. I had the fortune of working at Ripple and understanding the full nuances of a digital asset and how it worked globally. So understanding the exchange relationships, the market maker relationships, the institutions that were buying it, and even the sense of the following and the community that it had um, on a retail scale. So uh, what a wonderful view I had into the markets. I then really saw a need for better infrastructure to take place and wanted to make an impact in my own community here in America and uh, bring forth what I thought could be a very uh, user-friendly but also uh, forward-thinking um, model. So that's where the opportunity with Binance US amidst the, the idea of growing a team uh, of hardworking, you know, excited and hungry people um, to launch this thing with, with a tremendous brand uh, and great technology behind it is uh, such a privilege. Binance has a reputation for sort of pushing the limits, being very, very fast, very speedy. Um, is Binance US going to have to be slower? Is it, is it not going to have the same sort of innovative uh, you know, edge that the other Binance has given the regulatory environment? I think we have to be careful about each step we take, but it certainly doesn't mean we have multiple things going at once. So uh, we launched the full exchange in uh, three months, which is still incredible timing when you go from uh, having a concept to actually having a functional product and a team to support it. Um, and we'll continue to add features to it as well as add team members. Uh, we're based in San Francisco, and so we can move pretty quickly. Um, I don't think you should be expecting us to have uh, one hand tied behind our back, but um, we'll definitely be at the pace to which we can grow. And Binance itself, I think, offers more than uh, over 100 cryptocurrencies that are paired with. Do you think, I mean, is that something that you see a potential for with Binance US, or will it always be a more limited number of cryptocurrencies? I think by nature, you're going to see us uh, in two years, that's where they were able to get to. So having hundreds of coins listed, um, having uh, an insane amount of projects, they have so many uh, features that are uh, able to do from an outside uh, global aspect. Um, we will have to be on a more cautious scale, but one that I think we can really you know, provide a uh, an area where your, your hurdles are lowered. So whether it's the cost, whether it is the variety, uh, we wanna make this the opportunity for you to trade as you wish. So built for you, that is what Binance US will stand for. The American market has a number of incumbents already there. Coinbase obviously is the big kahuna. Um, how do you expect to entice users away from the platforms that they already use? That's a great question. I often think if you're if you're happy with what you've got, why change? Um, and that's where we're kind of coming in at a time. Uh, seven years later, after most of these incumbents have begun their, their trek into to helping the US access crypto, we're launching. So we have a bit of an advantage seeing what takes seven years of a roadmap uh, to get the right re recipe, but we're also able to do things quickly, like we've lowered all of our fees for trading uh, free until November 1st, um, because if you're new to crypto and cost is something that is uh, something holding you back, we don't want that to be the case. Um, the other aspect, I think uh, in crypto, we may have uh, isolated ourselves a little bit. So in the interest of encouraging community, if you invite a friend to trade on the platform, you and your friend will get $15. So if you keep that up, you can probably uh, have quite a nice business running by bringing your friends into Binance US. And what will the fees be after November 1st? After November 1st, we thought straightforward. So it's 10 basis points for personal accounts. And for corporate accounts, it's a little bit different um, given the volume that they're usually trading. Um, so we'll keep it straightforward. If we need to introduce tiering like the market is demanding, then we will go forth and do that. But really keeping our ear with the users and making sure that they're comfortable with what we're delivering. Thanks so much for being with us, Catherine. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'm Robert Hackett. And I'm Jen Vietchner. For more Balancing the Ledger, go to fortune.com. See you next time.